Welcome to Star Park, your one and only destination for all the fun you'll ever have. You may be asking, what is Star Park? And we're glad you asked. Star Corporation is the utopia of your dreams and the dream of your reality. And with a little help from some friends, we're here to bring you to a world of pure magic, all for low, low prices, where you can eat gourmet meals, rest in our luxurious hotel living spaces, and overall have some fun and safe family entertainment. So much of it that you'll never want to leave. So please, the next time you ask, what is Star Park? You'll know the answer. It's... I'm going to try and waste as little time as possible and say that if you know absolutely nothing about Star Park or Brawl Stars lore, I highly suggest you watch Michael's video, which documents the complete history of all the clues and sources we'll be discussing in this video, with the exception of anything related to the CCTV. But most of the people here already know the story, so instead, today and over the next few videos in this series, I'll be explaining the basis of what I think those clues mean, and at the very end of the series, maybe even a short summary on the entirety of Brawl Stars lore. So let's get down to it. I'm a turn up. Today we're going to get to the bottom of this and below, and welcome to Sub-Zero. So let's start with the simplest possible question. What exactly is Star Park? And well, it's a theme park, obviously, but if it were a totally normal theme park, we wouldn't be talking about it, now would we? So let's start off by establishing two key points. Number one, Star Park is from another dimension. Now, the rancher mentions this a couple of times, calling them interdimensional theme parks, which could mean that there are multiple, but that's not really important to the story right now. So for the moment, we'll just think of them as one park. Then there's also the Star Park theme song, which is called Another World, and how the Star Park website says the investor video was sent to people on all of the worlds. And even if you don't believe all of that, we can always count on the agency that literally made the lore themselves saying they reached out to influencers way outside the Brawl universe. So the multiverse is in play here, and more importantly, it includes us, the viewers, and the players. The second point is also straightforward. Star Park is this world's Disney corporation. As u slash x 8 pointed out, the investor video is based on Walt Disney's short films, which typically were filmed around the Imagineers, the people behind all the rides and decor. Not to mention, they also have an animation studio, just like Disney, and as U/Slash Oroxus pointed out in a tweet from the game lead Frank, many of these rides are exact matches of one another. And yet again, if you need more evidence, here's an interview article referring to it being based off of Epcot, which is a Disney park in Florida, in case you missed the resemblance between the giant spherical centerpieces. And let's be real here, Disney would not pass up an opportunity to sue the socks off someone copying them this closely. But these two ideas really set the stage for this world. Because here's the thing, Disney World, and specifically the Epcot Disney World allegedly had plans for something much bigger than a theme park. Now, due to very boring politics and legal semantics, Walt Disney had the ability to build fully functioning nuclear power plants in the park, and he very well might have if he hadn't passed away before the completion of his city, causing it to be transformed into yet another theme park. And I think this is a universe where Walt Disney, or rather Star Park, succeeded in building his utopia, complete with a fully functioning nuclear power plant. And that's not just speculation, look at this scene where everything's going wrong at the end of the investor video. What sign can we see? Danger. Nuclear materials. Now, I'd like to say that I believe this scene to be taking place inside this building, which I'm going to be calling the golf ball from now on because that's what they call it in the voice that hears you, and I think that mostly due to the rounded walls, implying that it's inside some sort of ball. And then, assuming that's the case, it would make perfect sense as to why nuclear gas is coming out of the golf ball at the very end. It's a power plant, which the boss bot damaged, releasing a toxic leak. And the last reason I believe this to be the case is the core of the building itself. Notice how it's a cylinder with several circular pipes around the sides and all topped off with a rounded top? This looks very similar to what are called modular nuclear reactors, a type that doesn't require gigantic cooling towers to be built around the park, and that's great if you're trying to keep it secret while hiding from government regulations. But something deeper is at play here. There's more than meets the eye. There's a much more dangerous evil lying within this corrupted amusement park. And this is where we introduce one of the key weapons in Star Park's arsenal. Today, we'll be talking about the radiation. Showdown smoke, green gas, poison clouds, whatever you want to call them, they can be found in nearly any game mode, constantly closing in to force people to fight, or else they'll do the fighting for them. And I mean that quite literally, it picks up Shelly and fights with her in no time to explain, and then it's just never brought up again. So yeah, that's a thing. But the question is simple, what is it? And well, I shouldn't have to spell that for you considering the title of this video. The green gas is absolutely radioactive, and we can see this directly confirmed within the 8-bit minigame, where after jumping into it, the robot's rats 
megahertz per hour go off the charts, with rads being a measurement of radiation. But what exactly does radiation do? Well, thankfully, in one interview with the creators of the Investor video, we're told that a nuclear explosion corrupted the minds of the theme park workers, which I have mentioned in previous theories, but still, who doesn't love it when things are outright confirmed? And I take this to mean that the radiation makes them violent. It twists their minds and makes them, for a lack of a better word, evil. In the same interview, we're given the example of the blueprints behind the baggage blaster, and how it was designed by an engineer gone mad. The corrupted minds of the concept team made it with no regard for human safety. The phrase, I survived the baggage blaster, should be taken very literally. But have you ever wondered where this gas comes from? Sure, when it's outside, it comes from some sort of weather phenomenon, as we're told in the news and weather reports. But inside the robot factory, which is sealed from the outside elements, it seeps in through these vents. And that's no natural disaster. It's being pumped into the building intentionally. StarCorp wants people to ingest the radiation, not only via inhalation, but also through food and drink. For example, spaghetti. Look closely at the Star Park DVD dinner instructions. What does it say? Forbid the green gas to escape, which proves that it's being put inside the frozen rations. And it's everywhere in the park. As Hunt points out, it's even what Ape-It dies to in Starcade Breakdown. And if you still don't believe in irradiated spaghetti, because it is a little ridiculous, let's link it back to the rancher's comments on green gas. Oh, oh no. Oh, I smell something. There's green gas. It's seeping in the door. It's been established several times that the radiation has a strong smell, mostly in the Star Park website, which shows a package of spaghetti on a stick with a note saying, has smell, not just because it's expired, but because it has the same scent as the showdown smoke that Render smells in his booth, which would explain why the dancer's ad says, Do you have a weak sense of smell? That's a plus, too. I'm also pretty sure that the max energy drinks are recycled nuclear waste, which you can see pouring out of the environment in Super City, which would explain why no one's buying them, forcing them to eventually start giving them away for free in an attempt to get rid of it all. And also, you know, how it's able to power a robot. Which brings me back to spaghetti, because Ranter has four main points to say about it. One, that they have weaponized it. Two, it's dangerous, has a half-life, and that it should be buried underground. Three, that nuclear reactors may be a part of this technology. And four, that everybody's fighting because of it. The first three points are all more evidence for it containing radiation, but the last one also serves as a continuation that nuclear waste makes people unhinged and violent. It's the catalyst which triggered this world's spiral into ruin. Now the currently infected higher-ups are trying to spread its effects onto all the guests and workers. But there's one last thing to consider here as well. What happens after Apa jumps into the Shodong gas? Take a look at the translated Japanese dialogue from you slash Defoe, which states, Is it about to open a new experience? Did you overdo it? Is it evolving? Or is it starting to break? Evolving is a very interesting choice of words. Now, we know that Apeit used to be a normal run of the Miller cake cabinet because we can see it in the investor video lacking any sort of arms or legs, with its face quickly flashing on screen for just a few frames before returning back to normal. And its in game description also supports this, since it uses the pronouns it, just like Sprout, which is typically reserved for objects and non sentient beings. And that's exactly what it was at one point. But something caused him to quote unquote evolve past this stage, and it very well could have been partly or entirely caused by the radiation, since if we look closely, the plume of gas is coming from its circuit board, which is the robot equivalent of its mind. Robots don't have lungs or brains, so you would think that they would be immune to the effects, and yet here we clearly see it affecting Apit and turning it into something greater. But there are still many more questions to answer. For example, was it just the radiation that caused Apit to come alive, or is there another factor at work here? So make sure to tune in next time where we'll be taking another deep dive into the world of Star Park and its secrets that lie beneath it. But until then, thanks for watching, and make sure to have a day as bright as the stars.